Money, money and money. We need money for everything. Right from buying our favorite outfits to eating our favorite food, without money we cannot survive. Funny, isn't it? They see the basic needs of the man are food, shelter and water. But somebody forgot to add money part to this list. Today, if you don't have money, you don't have anything. However, there is one question that no one has been able to answer in the history of mankind. How is this piece of paper has more value than a human life? Well, it is what it is and here is why you need to know about this too. So let's start from the basics. Why does money serve as a medium of exchange? Let's consider an example. Suppose you wish to buy a house. Let's assume that you have 100 kgs of gold and 200 metal coins as money. Will you be able to buy this house? The price of 1 kg gold is 4924 rupees. An average one bedroom house is anywhere between 20 to 35 lakhs. So, if you have 100 kgs of gold, that amounts to 4 lakhs 92400 rupees. This is not enough. You might feel you have a lot, but it does not add up to the value of the house. Simple. There are two things you need to understand here. Number one, money is the best form of exchange. Number two, it is capable of measuring the value of a product. This means that if one person wants to buy goods and services from other person, then they can do so by exchanging them for money. Now, let's take the same example again. If you had 20 to 35 lakhs in hand, buying this house would not have been a problem at all. It is accepted all over the world and this solved a huge problem prevalent in the barter system which we will be discussing in the later half of this lesson. Money itself doesn't have any monetary value as it's just piece of paper or metal coin. But because it is regulated by government across the world and widely accepted as a method of payment, it has power. This makes things easier by serving as a medium of exchange. Let's consider another example here. Say you go to a local shop to buy one kilo of rice. What will happen? if you will give the person a one dollar note yes you guessed that right he won't accept it why because dollars are not locally accepted in india all indian traders recognize the rupee as the medium of exchange all their goods are valued as an amount in rupees however there are ways in which you can convert this dollar into rupees and then use it that is foreign exchange we will touch base on that topic in the later part of this lesson. Thus, this helps understand three things. Number one, a medium of exchange acts as a middleman. Number two, a medium of exchange facilitates trade between two people. Number three, currency is different for different countries. Now, you may have a question. When different places require different currencies, why not just settle for barter? It was so much better and convenient. Well, was it? Let's find out. Let's say you wake up and find that the exchange systems have changed. People are again back to barter and notes hold no value. What would you do? Would you exchange your clothes for food? Or would you give away your phone to maintain your livelihood? If there is one thing we know, it's that this system will make you mad. This is one way to look at it. But what if the person in question doesn't even want the item you are offering in exchange? What if he strikes a barter with some third person you are left hanging right there, both stuck, broke and deprived of what you need? This is why money is so important. Just pay the price for one kilogram of rice and get over it. No drama, no problems. Barter never worked out and never will. That's why money is so important in this exchange system. The EPO situation helps us answer the following aspects. Number one, barter brings in inequality in value. Number two, barter is not feasible all the times. Number three, barter is an irrational form of trade. But has barter died completely? 
Is there a place in India that still follows barter? Currency is prevalent in the modern parts of the world, but what about the unexplored parts of India where the tribals live? Let's take you to a place situated in the northeastern part of Assam, Dayang Beljuri in Morigon. Dayang Beljuri is located around 5 kilometers from Jagi Road in Morgon district and 32 kilometers from Gauhati. It is easily accessible by road. John Bill Mela is a 500-year-old cashless fair. Presided by the Tiwa tribal king, John Bill Mela is observed from the first Wednesday after Maghor, Boghali, Bihu, and Jagi Road. This three-day community fair is the only fair in India where the barter system is still practiced. Traditional songs and dances performed by the members of different tribes of Assam add elegance to this festival. Here, you can buy everything without money. So, don't be surprised if you are asked to exchange your favorite watch for something you wish to buy. Just saying. Today, there are other alternative mediums of exchange as well. In the 21st century, a new form of currency has entered the vocabulary, virtual currency. Virtual currencies such as bitcoins have no physical existence or government backing and are traded and stored in electronic form. Heard about Bitcoin and Dogecoins? They are all part of cryptocurrencies. Did you know someone in Rhode Island bought land in exchange for Dogecoins? There was a time we couldn't even imagine going beyond paper money. But look where we are now. This is the evolution of money. You can see that the buyer of the land and the seller agreed to use Dogecoin as an alternative currency as a medium of exchange. However, there are certain limitations to this. Cryptocurrency is anonymous, making it the host of illegal activities like tax evasion and money laundering. Since this currency is not regulated by the federal government, it is risky to invest in this technology. Now that we have seen money, its exchange systems and its virtual forms, let's jump into the most important piece of paper that we deal with every day, currency. A currency is a medium of exchange for goods and services. In short, it's money in the form of paper or coins usually issued by a government and generally accepted at its face value as a method of payment. Money by itself is just a worthless piece of paper. However, because of legal backing by the government, it has power. Tomorrow, if the government decides to take its value away, it turns back into what it originally was just a piece of paper. According to worldatlas.com, 180 national currencies recognized by the United Nations are currently in circulation. Another 66 countries either use the US dollar or peg their currencies directly to the dollar. Different countries have different currencies. However, various countries have stronger currencies when compared to the Indian rupee. Now let's look at this table. Do you know the main reason for this domination of currencies? It is oil. India imports 70% of its oil from oil dominating countries like the Gulf and the Saudi. Now, it's clear why the Kuwaiti dinar is on the top, right? You might question the other countries on the list. Talking about the European and American currencies, one should know that these countries might not be exporters of oil, yet they are self-sufficient. They do not have many imports but are heavy exporters of goods and services. Hence, this shows us that countries which have a high GDP, gross domestic product, no or low debt, high exports rate, oil dominance will have stronger currencies above the Indian rupee. But this does not mean that the Indian currency is the lowest in power. There are other countries as well which are weaker than the Indian rupee. To be precise, there are 13 of them. Laos, Zimbabwe, Paraguay, Indonesia, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Hungary, Mongolia, Chile, Venezuela, Cambodia, Vietnam and Costa Rica. Did you notice something? We didn't really mention the rates of these currencies. Why? Because they might not be the same tomorrow. You need to understand that these currencies keep fluctuating. That means the rates that you get today might not be the same tomorrow. Sometimes it increases while other times it might decrease as well. 
it all depends on the supply and demand of foreign currencies there are three cases to understand this concept better number 1 when demand and supply are equal let's consider this with an example if the demand for us dollar increases by 100 and the supply of this currency in the market also increases by 100 this means there is no reason for any hike or drop in the price of the currency the currency will remain stable number 2 when demand is more and the supply is less taking the same example here if the demand for us dollar increases to 100 but the supply of the currency in the market is only 50 this means there is a shortage what happens next there is excess demand but a shortage of supply the price shoots up number 3 when demand is less and supply is more now what happens in this case is the supply of us dollar is 100 but there is no demand let's say the demand for the currency is just 30 this means the price will drop because the currency is present in excess in the market that lowers its value now that we know why these currencies are higher and lower in power let's talk about the exchange factor here while traveling you might have seen co-passengers and or even your parents going to a counter and exchanging currency as we already know when you travel to a foreign country you are required to have the currency of that nation let's take an example you take a flight to europe and decide to go on a vacation to spain now the currency here in power is euro once you land in spain rupee technically holds no power over euros until you exchange your currency for the accepted currency in that country currently the going rate of the euro is 88.79 rupees that means for 88.79 indian rupees you will get 1 euro expensive right that is the power of currencies however there is one fact that you should keep in mind while performing this trade there is a certain interest that you will need to pay consider this as a trading fee so you might have to give 90 rupees instead of 88.79 to get 1 euro in exchange this process is called currency trading currency trading involves the selling and buying of currencies this means that the person you sold your currency to can sell this back to some other person who needs rupees at a higher price this difference between the buying and selling price is how foreign exchange traders or the person who is selling and buying these foreign currencies make money this is how the system works and you should know about this too clear now that you know the concept of currency exchange let's jump back to our indian currency the indian currency has always seen its ups and downs but in 2016 the people of india were shaken when demonetization took place first the 1500 rupee note was in use but then later prime minister modi decided to demonetize it just like that a note with monetary value turned into a plain piece of paper then the 2000 rupee note was introduced and people had a new currency in town since then the use of upis like google pay and phone pay has gone up that was the advent of digitalization not only did this eliminate tax evaders and circulation of black money but also make transactions easier locally by allowing instant transactions of digital money people can go cashless and work through a digital mode of money transfers this is a neater and more feasible approach as there are no chances of fraud or duplicate money launders no change to return no receipt required it's all done electronically and smoothly the changes in currency are happening as fast as the climate As we already spoke of the new virtual currencies cryptocurrencies and bitcoins are the talk of the town now do you even know what the price of one bitcoin is today in indian rupees it is 28 lakhs 35979.92 indian rupees yes you read that right this is the present truth of currency and no one knows what the future holds and how things will change today we are comfortable with gpay and other upi modes of transfer but tomorrow we don't even know if this will exist in the first place that is the kind of change we are talking about here with the rise of the internet digital payments have emerged 
as a promising payment medium that has the potential to take the place of physical money in the future. Answering the initial question in this video, we now know why a piece of paper has more value than human life. This piece of paper dominates the world and this is what determines the strength of a country.